Hi! So today we are going to start a new series and this series is specifically for non-ballet based studios. So studios that have a lot of different genres in them, like in particular competition studios, but also just programs with a, a wide range of dance styles who want to have excellent ballet, but are not a ballet studio. This is completely doable. I know studios that have a wide range of dance styles that include very good ballet. I have been part of studios like this. It's definitely possible, but for some reason, it seems to not be the norm. I hear a lot more complaints about ballet programs in these studios than I hear praise. So we're gonna start this series to see if we can kind of help bridge that gap so that your ballet and your jazz and your tap and your hip hop and your African and your Irish step and whatever other styles you're doing are all excellent and all really positive experiences for your students. Today's video is specifically for the most influential person in your studio. If you're not the most influential person at your studio, that's okay. The information in this video can still definitely help you. But today we're talking about the most influential person because if they don't see the value in ballet, this whole effort is sunk. How do you know who the most influential person is? It is not necessarily the owner of the studio. It doesn't matter what your website says. It doesn't matter what your communications with families say. It doesn't even matter what you say to the dancers. What matters and what gets heard the loudest are your actions. Whose opinion determined actions? The person who has the most say over team placements, over show casting, over rehearsal schedules, over teaching schedules. That's the most influential person at your studio. And most influential doesn't mean favorite or most popular. You might still be fielding plenty of complaints about this person, doesn't matter. So I'm talking here to the most influential person in the studio. Because your opinion matters so much at the studio, the students have developed a really fine-tuned ability to read you, to tell what you think, what your opinion is, what your feelings are. What you say doesn't matter, how you feel is what those kids are attuned to. So how you feel about ballet is what they hear. In order for us as ballet teachers to do our best job and help the studio be successful and reach its goals and help the students have a really productive and enjoyable evening every time they come, we need your help. If you hate what we do, we cannot be successful. I believe you when you say your ballet teacher was horrible. I do, I believe you. I have heard too many horror stories to go skipping around thinking that we are all nice. I have heard from people younger than me about getting hit with sticks hard enough to leave a bruise. I have heard about teachers putting thumbtacks underneath students' arches during plies so that they didn't roll their ankles. That's the laziest teaching I can possibly think of. There are so many better ways to do that. I have heard from students young enough to be my children, like kids who are currently dancing in competition studios, I went in one summer and the kids were very like, Argh. and I was like, hey, are we okay? And they're like, well, last summer, our teacher thought we were talking too much. So she turned the heat up to like 90 and made us keep dancing. Like a couple people were throwing up, but she wouldn't let us get a drink. So like, we just don't want you to do that. Let's be clear. All three of those examples were abuse. It is not okay to, to bruise anyone. It is not okay to set someone up in a situation where they're going to get poked by a thumbtack. And it's really not okay to give people heat stroke. All of those examples were abusive. And all of those examples come from people younger than me. So the idea that like 
cruel teaching is a thing of the past is, is obviously not true. If you are a dancer of color, an indigenous person, Asian, black, Latinx, any dancer of color, the ballet system has also worked against you. And I am sorry. When you tell me that you had a horrible experience in your ballet class, I believe you. I'm asking you to do a really hard thing and separate the person who hurt you in a ballet class from the ballet class. And I absolutely recognize that this is harder for dancers of color because the ballet system has not been supportive, which is a really nice way of saying it. It also hurt you. I'm asking you to separate them as best you can. The teacher in the studio with you is probably not the teacher who hurt you. And if it is, why are you still there? Why are you okay in an environment where abuse is a tolerated teaching practice? There are really good ballet teachers who really care about their students and won't hurt them. When you have reached a point where you can say the person in this room is not perpetuating hurt. This is where I can step in and start to help you. Let's look at a couple of approaches from there. What is one thing that ballet does that you think is valuable or helps the style that you teach? If you can think of one thing, keep that in your mind whenever students are like, oh, I have to go to ballet next. Like if they're doing uh, that's a great opportunity for you to slip in and be like, great, because we just worked really hard on your feet, but your ballet teacher is gonna take you even farther. Or I'm so glad you're gonna go to ballet because that's gonna help you develop your focus abilities. Or ballet doesn't have to be your favorite, but this is an opportunity to learn to move in another way. Whatever the good thing you can think of about ballet is, try to keep that in your mind because that's what the kids will start to pick up on. They will start to realize, oh, okay, there is something likable here. A really common complaint is, oh, the music is so boring. Okay, I can see where you're coming from. It's a different style of music. It's not everybody's favorite. It's not commonly heard. It's very unfamiliar. I can see where you're coming from. If you have students who are complaining that they ballet music has no beat. That's not entirely true. So thing number one, how loud is your music? Bearing in mind, especially that your music has a very strong bass, more than likely, and that like can shake the building. And you might really love having your walls shake, but guess what, I'm next to you. So I'm assuming now that your, your music level is, you know, comparable, all the different classes have about the same volume going on. And, they, and your students are still thinking that it's hard to hear the beat. Here's the difference. Music that is more modern has the beat carried in the bass line. That's where your students are used to looking for the, for the beat. The music that is used in ballet class usually carries the beat in the melody. Those are the higher notes. It's there. And once you know how to listen for it, it's really clear. But if students are, are listening for the beat in those lower registers, they're not finding it because it isn't there. So this is an opportunity for you to encourage the students to learn to listen to their music on a deeper level, which will then translate into better musicality for your class. If you find ballet boring, like, okay, I totally understand that you might, and it, it might just be boring. Like, I don't like Jane Austen. I think Jane Austen is boring. And I have an English major. Do you know how weird it is for like a feminine presenting English major to not like Jane Austen? Some things just don't click for you. If you are willing to kind of re-examine the idea of maybe ballet is not as boring as you thought, there are some really fun ballets out there. Right now it's October, uh, Ballet West and Texas Ballet Theater are both presenting Dracula this month. The Joffrey Ballet and Carolina Ballet are both doing Dracula. No, no, not Dracula. They're doing Frankenstein. Kansas City Ballet is doing Jekyll and Hyde. So if you are interested in like October spooky stuff, 
there are ballet versions of that. One of my favorite ballets is the Royal Ballet's production of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It is so much fun. And you can find it on Amazon Prime. It's great. I love it. It's super, super fun. You know, if you're like, ballet is boring because they do the same th thing three times. Do it to the right, do it to the left, do it to the right. Ta-da. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's Petipa's fault. But these newer ballets don't follow that same structure. So there are fun ballets out there. Like they're choreographed in a contemporary time period, but they use the classical vocabulary. They are out there for you to find. If you are still struggling with finding something to like about ballet, a way to appreciate the detail-orientedness of ballet, have you watched the YAGP live streams? You don't have to watch them live. I'm usually about five weeks behind. So for those of you competing, like just know that five weeks later, I'm at my house like cheering you on. What if you watched that with a ballet teacher? What if you had like a little studio potluck with snacks and you watched it and you asked the ballet teacher, like, what are you seeing? Something about that caught my eye. What, what do you think of it? If your ballet teacher is fun to hang out with in general, this might be a really good way to learn more about how they approach teaching and to help you train your eye for the details that are involved in ballet, which can help you find things that you like about it and can help you find ways for ballet to support your area of expertise. Another suggestion to help you gain in your appreciation of ballet and see how it can apply and support the work that you do is when you go to conventions, I, I know you are super busy. I know that you are taking way more students than I wanna keep track of. I know that you need to make sure they are all in the building, that they are all fed, that they are all going to class. I know that like, for some reason, they're like, should I still be going to the junior room? Yes, you have a junior wristband on, you go to the junior room all day. <laughs> I don't know how that's hard to know, but I know that you've said that like a thousand times. You have a lot going on at conventions and I definitely recognize that. But conventions bring in really good ballet teachers who know their stuff, who have really good technique and who know how to connect with dancers who are not strictly ballet dancers. And if you really wanna get into this, follow the ballet teacher around from class to class to class. What you'll find usually is that the ballet teacher has picked a theme that they apply to all of those levels, like minis, juniors, seniors, whatever. So it really gives you a chance to see how a component one theme in ballet can be modified for different levels. It's always fun to watch inspiring teachers. So those are some suggestions. I'm not asking you to love it. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Like Mr. Darcy's shirtless coming out of a pond. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I'm not going to watch the whole movie and I'm definitely not going to read the book. I get it. Not everything is for every person and that's okay. But as the most influential person at your studio, we, the ballet teachers, we cannot do our jobs well without a little bit of support from you. Honest support. It doesn't matter what you say, it matters how you feel because that's what the kids are, are really honing in on. And if you don't love ballet immediately or ever, <laughs> right? If you're like, I just wanna hate it a little bit less, the kids will sense that and the kids will come with you with that. You don't need to love ballet. It, like, I don't wanna make it your favorite. I love that your area of expertise is your favorite because you're so good at it. I just wanna help you appreciate and feel comfortable and feel supported by what I do on my side. Company directors and jazz teachers and hip hop teachers and parents, what are the problems and the areas of disconnect that you're seeing. Like, leave me a comment. I would love to help you. We can have excellent ballet at any studio. You can't have like pre-professional training at any studio. That's okay. But we can do this really well and really joyfully anywhere. So what do you need help with? Because I'm here to help.
this is part of a series. I will be revisiting this idea of how to nurture excellent ballet at a non-ballet studio. There will be more videos coming, so be sure to subscribe so that you know where those are. I also have a monthly newsletter where I talk about ballet technique and elements of artistry. You can go to my website, geekyballerina.com, and sign up for that. It comes out at the beginning of the month. I hope you have a really great class today.